A year ago, they were trying to learn names and figure out seating assignments, parking spaces, and the process of becoming a lawmaker. They ran for different reasons, but each with the optimism that baseball players have on the opening day of spring training. Shortly before they were sworn in last January, the Hummel Report sat down with four of the General Assembly's 16 newly elected first-term lawmakers. They include Representatives Julie Casimiro, a Democrat from North Kingstown, Jason Knight, a Democrat from Barrington, and Republican Robert Quattrochi of Situate, along with Senator Janine Kalkin, a Democrat from Warwick. We gathered them again earlier this month to get their reflections on the first session. Why can't we address more of the bills earlier in the session and not wait until the end? Kalkin echoed a sentiment we heard from all four, a hurry up and wait feel to the session, where virtually nothing of substance gets done in the first couple of months, followed by a deluge of legislation in the final weeks. Uh, you hear all the time about bills that get a hearing and then they get held for further study year after year after year. Um, it's a lot I, of study. It's, yeah, and I would love it if there was some other way that, you know, whether it be a majority of the senators or the, the reps could request a vote one way or the other. Um, just to kind of push it to the next level. What surprises me also is the number of bills that never leave committee. And I think it's because you have to have someone lobbying for, you, for them. So I will be lobbying a lot stronger this year. What about the number of bills? Oh, it's insane. It's insane. Did you know there were that many bills No. Filed? And it, what, I, what I was really surprising for me in the first year is that we hear so few bills at the beginning of the session and then like that last week, we, it's like an insane amount of bills coming to the floor. How many bills? During the 2017 session, more than 2,400 pieces of legislation were filed. 1,386 on the House side and 1,030 in the Senate. I'm not a legislator that, that feels that we need a real lot more laws being produced. You know, uh, what do we have like 2,500 proposed coming out of both chambers, 2,500 laws. I mean, how many laws do people need to tell them how to live their lives? Knight said as the session progressed, he learned where the fate of legislation was really decided. And we think that, you know, the, the decisions on the bills get made when we're all debating them in this room. I mean, the textbook answer to how we do our jobs is we sit in this chair, listen to the arguments back and forth, make a decision in this chair and press the button. And that's not how it works. I mean, by, by the time a bill gets to the floor, most everybody has made a decision. And the real policy arguments have happened in the back rooms. Um, <clears throat> they've happened up in the speaker's office. They happened in leadership's office. They happen because two reps are sitting in a corner and they grab in another one and they say, what do you think about this? So the real debate actually happens in the back rooms and in the back halls. So is the rest of this just for show? I don't think so. I think that when you see the, de the debates up here, they are, they are people making their points for the record. Knight says this year he plans to narrow his focus, introducing fewer bills and concentrating his efforts on getting the highest priorities passed. That includes legislation about reproductive rights. Rhode Island law makes abortion illegal, but it has been superseded by the Supreme Court's Roe v. Wade decision almost 35 years ago allowing abortion. He says President Donald Trump's election last year changes everything. Now we're in a time when there's a possibility that Roe v. Wade could be flipped, right, because of changes upstairs in, in the United States Supreme Court. So then it reverts to the state? So if Roe oh. v. Wade is flipped... Arguably, right, probably, all those laws that are on our books become active again. And abortion is immediately illegal in the state of Rhode Island. It is not a niche issue. It's something that I hear about every day. It, it, it has a huge uh, percentage of the communications that I have with my constituents. I hear from people on choice all the time. Quattrochi sits on the House Finance Committee, one of the highest profile and time consuming committee assignments. Does it blow you away that we have a $9.2 billion budget and then we never seem to have enough money? Uh, I, I have said it many times, I find it to be an obscene amount of money. Yeah, especially 
if you look at a state like New Hampshire, which is much larger than Rhode Island and operates at nearly half the budget and you know without sales tax and uh, without state income tax. So where is all this money going? Right? We talked last year about you came for the 38 studio stuff and you were sitting in the audience and now you're sitting there. Did your perspective change at all being on the other side of the microphone listening? Well certainly I've, I've seen a lot more and you know listened to a lot more of what's going on. I, I'm just really baffled at how many how many departments just like can never get enough it's never enough it's like okay uh, we may be in a deficit but we need more the state has faced some challenges you know there's the budget's always a problem and it's going to get worse this year uhip has been an issue you'll have the paw socks coming up i'm wondering being on the inside now does it look any different from the inside than it did from the outside i, I think it's more frustrating on the inside um, I particularly am alarmed by what's going on with DCYF, having come from the child welfare world. And I think it's more alarming on the inside because it's right there in your face, as opposed to the average citizen reading about it in the newspaper. It's up close and personal right now. So the UHIP disaster, DCYF, all of that, it's right there for you. The UHIP is like the, 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 exam, the biggest example of frustration for elected officials. We know it, there's a problem and it's just not being fixed. Calkin agrees. It's one of those things that really frustrates me considering the amount of money that we spent on it, the amount of time. Um, I worked for large corporations that were able to do things because either through efficiencies or having you know, in-person staff. Um, you know, I, and I look at that whole thing and I go, you know, there's got to be a better way. Like, how did it take so long and, and cost all that money? Knight talked about the struggle between voting his conscience and representing those who may disagree philosophically or politically. When you run for this job, right, you say to yourself, I want to do the right thing. I want to go up there and try to make the best policy decisions I can for Rhode Island and for my community. And every decision, and you, and you come up here and you learn that every single decision you make has a political value, either positive or negative, right? And so there's, I think, a natural tendency for a certain kind of person to start making their votes just strictly on that political value. I try to make the best decisions on a policy basis for Rhode Island, and some of those decisions are going to be unpopular. Quattrochi, as one of only 11 Republicans in the House, said he knows it's a challenge getting legislation passed as a member of the minority party. I've always lived by the philosophy that you really, it, it's hard to get worked up about what you can't control. So, you know, I'll, I'll try and control what I can and, and add what I can and, you know, as best as I can. As for knowing now what they didn't know a year ago? A lot about the process, obviously being a new legislator, uh, there's a lot of things that you learn on the fly. Um, I used to say it's like trying to catch a bus that's, you know, driving down the street. There's a lot that goes on around here that nobody's going to tell you about. There's a lot that goes on that you have to find out for yourself. And you come in in the next year with that accumulated knowledge. You're not starting from zero. The first year is a real learning challenge. I mean, you've got to learn how to get things done, but you're also building relationships and friendships. Now I think I'm going to hit the ground running and be a lot stronger this year. At the Statehouse, Jim Hummel for the Hummel Report. Oh,